Good afternoon, I'm Shannon. I work here in Family History at the Library uh, and welcome back to those who listened to our previous session. Today we've got part two of Newspapers for Family History Trove. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to turn off this camera though so I'm not distracted by my face. In our previous session we looked at the browsing newspapers uh, and search tips and some of the features of online newspapers that are on Trove. In today's session, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, adding tags and notes, correcting text and managing your research with lists. Okay, so remember to get to Trove, it's just a matter of visiting the library's uh, homepage and right here on the partner collections, we've got Trove or you can just Google Trove. Hopefully it should be the very first result. So we'll just give that a click. Okay, and here we are on the Trove homepage. Now over here, we've got two options. We've got sign up or log in. Okay. Now you can create an account uh, using Trove. It's all free. Uh, registering is different to membership to the National Library or your local library. Uh, and registering or creating an account really allows you to make the most out of using Trove. So you can pick your username and it asks for other uh, uh, details such as email, password, you've got to confirm your password and confirm you're not a robot. Can't change your username, so uh, try and keep it all above board, nothing too offensive because other people might uh, be able to see it. Okay, so once you've created an account, then you can log in. Okay, so I'm just going to log in using my um, username and password. Hopefully I remember what my password is. Sometimes my mind just goes completely blank. Okay, there we are. So we've logged into Trove now. And we can see over here our um, sign up and login buttons are going. It's been replaced with my username and the drop down uh, menu. The first thing you can see is the profile just here. So here's some information that I've added about myself in my biography. Um, and I've put, I'm just a wee humble family historian. And I've included family names I'm researching and uh, locational details about those surnames. So this is really useful information for other people that might stumble up across my profile. So I put um, various surnames that I, I'm, I've been researching for a number of years now, so Sutton, from Parramatta, New South Wales, and originally from Middlesex in uh, the UK, and uh, all the way down to McDermott's in Adelaide. In no particular order, it's just, it is what it is. You could put in your other research interests or any information you want to share with others who might view your profile. When in your profile, you can look at things like uh, text corrections that you've made, Okay, so we could see I've uh, corrected 91 lines of text. We can look at lists I've created, and I'll be going in into more detail about these uh, later, as well as tags and notes. Uh, we've got our settings page. Uh, in the upgraded Trove, uh, due to privacy requirements, all existing accounts and newly created accounts are set to private meaning nobody can see tags you've made or lists you've created or notes or your biography. You can make all of your information public by uh, clicking on settings just up here and toggling, so from uh, private to public and vice versa. All of my um, information is set to public, but we could toggle it to private and back to public again. It's really up to you. It's a good way to keep things private if you'd like to. You might be doing some top secret research. You might be running a family history book and don't want to be gazumped by a devious cousin. But um, in here you can see all of my settings are set to public because I want people to um, be able to collaborate with me. I want people to see lists I'm working on, tags I've created. I want people to see notes I've made. And I want people to be able to find me by uh, searching Trove because um, it's really a way of evaluating and finding other descendants or people with similar research interests as I uh, have. Now that we've talked a little bit about the profile, let's kick on to how we use Trove to manage our research. 
And the first way that I'll uh, go, uh, go into managing our research is by using tags just here. So we can click in the tag cloud. You can see tags that I've made um, using Trove and I'll go into a little bit about what they are now. Tag is a way of describing the content of an article. It makes finding content easier and flags information for yourself and for other users. As an example, lots of female ancestors might be mentioned in the newspaper using their husband's first name or initials only. Tagging an article is a way of making female ancestors findable using the na their names instead of their husband's names. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, back to Trove, back to the homepage, and we're going to search for a female ancestor. And I'm going to search for Mrs. W. A. Flynn. Remember the way of searching that uh, I showed you in the previous session, in quotation marks, tilde two. We're going to limit our search to newspapers and gazette results. And we're going to limit our search to newspapers and the refined results. And we can see the first article is uh, Mrs. W.A. Flynn of Osborne Road in Manly, and she's got a snake in her garden. And here we are. So she had a, a three foot brown snake, which she had nearly stepped on. And I, yes, could have, could have been bad for her and her de <laughs> potential descendants. <laughs> so you can see she's only mentioned here using her, um, her husband's initials and surname. So she's not discoverable at all. Um, her name was Gladys Florence Stillwell, that's her maiden name before she was married. But because this article only mentions her as Mrs. W.A. Flynn, she won't appear if you're searching for Gladys Florence Stillwell. I can make her discoverable or findable on Trove under her maiden name and full name, uh, Gladys Florence Stillwell. Or after she was married, she was known as Gladys Florence Stillwell Flynn. She went double barrel. She preferred to be known by this name. She was fiercely proud of her maiden name and uh, kept it her whole long life. And the way that I do this is by tagging the article. So over here, we can see we've got the information. Remember, I went through all of this in the previous session. And down here, we've got the tags feature. So now that I'm logged in, I'm going to click on the tag uh, icon and I'm going to add a tag. And I'm going to pop in her name. That is Florence Stillwell. Such a lovely surname, Stillwell. I quite like it. And we're just going to click save. Okay. And there we are, the tags there. And I could put another tag in. And you could even do something like GS, oh, GF. Okay. So now when I search for either of those um, terms, so I could search for Gladys Florence Stillwell or Gladys Florence Stillwell Flynn or GF Stillwell, this article should appear where it wouldn't have appeared uh, from a search of those uh, keywords before. So we've made uh, the article, we've made uh, Gladys discoverable by her own name, not just under her husband's name. So we're just going to type in her uh, name up here or any of those search terms that I've got below. And there the articles come up and you can see all of the tags that I've made uh, for the article just under there as well. Keep your tags brief. Okay, so I usually tag uh, using maybe an identifier such as a name. You don't want anything too long in the tags because it's just meant to be short and sharp. If you uh, wanted to put in a longer explanation of how, uh, of who Gladys was or any additional detail, you'd do that by uh, adding a note to the article, okay? And just down here, 
We've got list and then we've got notes. We can add a note. And we might want to just, uh, just explain for other people who view the article and see those tags, who Gladys was. So we could go, we could go something like Mrs. W. A. Flynn. Is Gladys Lawrence Stillwell, wife of William Augustus Flynn. Okay, so I've put in additional detail just there. As a note, not a tag. It's a bit long for a tag. You can like to keep your note private. Um, all my notes are usually public. Okay. Anything you put in the notes and anything you tag will be keyword searchable in Trove. And I'll just show you. Okay, sometimes Trove might take a little while to load, um, but give it another go in a minute or so. Sometimes the tags, list, notes could take a while to appear. Okay, and here we are. So we could see the article just there. Okay, so um, it's it's really tags and notes are really a way of uh, just making things more discoverable. So uh, a, a a good example is sort of the the maiden names of married women. But you could put in literally anything and then it becomes searchable by a trove. Here's a sneaky uh, note I added to an article long, long ago to prove my point. Okay. So I, I put in a tag, woozle wuzzle. Needless to say, the word woozle wuzzle doesn't appear anywhere in this article. Um, but because I've popped it in there, it then becomes keyword searchable. And I can also delete tags that I've put in, which is one of the real benefits of uh, registering for Trove. You don't need to register uh, to add tags to articles. You don't need to sign up or be logged in, but it gives you a level of control over content that you add in there. Okay, so we could just delete that tag because I'm, I'm, I'm the creator. I put that tag in, I can also get rid of it when I'm signed in. And again, we can see all tags that we've created in our tag cloud on our profile. So we just click up here on, our, on the drop down, click tags, and we can see our tag cloud here and all of the tags that I've previously created. And if, you, if I click on any of these tags, it should bring up articles used with that tag or where I've used that tag. So I might um, just show you an example. I might click on Henry Darlow Sutton. You can see I've used this tag 12 times. And I've just clicked on it and then it brings up all of those articles that I've used that tag with. And again, I can uh, delete most of these tags that I've created. Uh, if you tag it on it, so you can't delete your tag and it won't be added to your tag cloud. Okay, so that's tagging. Another excellent way to save and organize your research is via lists. Okay, so just up here under my profile, I'm going to click on list. We're going to see uh, an example of some list I've created. Lists are a great way of um, saving articles you found about a particular person or subject in one easy to find and keep track of place. It's a great way to keep track of your family history finds on Trove. Okay, and we can see down here examples of lists I've created. I've got quite a few lists. Some of them don't have many in them, but some of them have quite a few articles. I'll click on a list to show you an example of a list I've made. We could see here my list uh, for Henry Darlow Sutton. He's my, uh, and you can see I popped in a description of this list. And this description is really useful for me when I launch back into Trove and want to start researching Henry again, because I've got 
quite a few people on my family tree. Um, I find having this information such as um, who he is, how he's connected to me. So he's my great times three grandfather. I've got some information about how I'm descended from him. All of these people are deceased. So I don't mind listing them here, but I probably wouldn't put names of people that are still alive. I've got his um, details about his birth and his parentage. Okay. Um, and his descent, what he worked as. So again, useful sort of uh, keywords that I could pop in maybe as a Boolean and search. So I could go Henry Sutton and Baker. Remember we covered that in our previous session. Got details about who he married and where they lived. Okay, and then finally when he died, so I can limit my search to when he was at least alive. Okay, down here we've got a permanent link uh, to this list that I can send any other uh, family. And I've sent that persistent link to quite a few uh, family members who are interested in uh, my family history research. And down here we can see all of the articles that I've, um, that I've saved about Henry. Okay, we could see uh, the tags that I've popped in. And you can also see uh, notes to item that you've added to list. I'll go into this a bit more as well. So uh, these little snippets or these notes that I've added to articles are really useful because it means I don't have to uh, go back and read the article to find particular parts of information that I'm after. So location of death uh, at residence, um, the fact that he was a member of a friendly society and other information about notices. And um, this one that he was fined for obscene language in Redfin, but I'm not quite sure whether that's my Henry. It, it sounds a bit like him, who knows? <laughs> Okay, uh, funeral notice. So you can see really um, useful information, list numerous names of chil children, particularly the married names of daughters. Okay, so I find the list a fantastic way of keeping uh, track of my research. Now that I've shown you a list and all that you can achieve with it, um, I'm going to show you how to create a list and I'm going to use um, the example of Gladys who we used before, who we uh, tagged an article about her. So we might go Gladys Lawrence Stilwell. How to spell a name. We'll just search for her. We found the article about the snake in a garden. We'll click on that. And now we're gonna um, add this article to a list. Okay by creating a list. So over here, just underneath the tag and above the notes is the um, list feature. So we just give that a click. All we do is go add. So I can add it to a previous list I've created. So you might, and I can add it to multiple lists just by ticking in the little boxes here. And clicking save, perhaps you've got uh, an article that mentions several ancestors. So you don't want to just uh, restricted to adding it to one list. Uh, we can see some of the lists have these little people symbols next to them, so groups of people, so that's a little um, silhouette of a person. Uh, these are collaborative lists and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a, a wee bit. But we want, there's no list currently for Gladys or for her husband for that matter. So I'm just going to create a new list by clicking on this little uh, plus symbol here. I'm going to add a title. Okay, and I might put something like great times three grandmother. Okay, as a description for the list. Don't worry too much about that in here. You can always edit that later. So that's really just a placeholder for me. You can elect to make your list private or collaborative. Um, so private, nobody but you can see it in collaborative list we'll go into in a bit more detail later. The article's a bit self-explanatory, um, but I could add a reason for adding this item, which then appears in the, um, in the sort of notes field in the list. So I could put a bit more detail. Three foot uh, brown snake in garden. Gladys 
almost stepped on. Okay. And then we can click save. Okay. And then it appear, we can see that the article appears in this list. Okay. So there we are. And if we go back into our lists, just by clicking a profile up here, we can see um, we've now got Gladys Florence Stillwell in our list section. We can just click on that. And again, sometimes it could take a little while for the content to load. So uh, I usually give it a couple of minutes, but I've just refreshed the page. And here it is. And we can see the um, we can see the the uh, article saved in here. With my note, we can see all the tags I've made, and I can always um edit the description by going into manage this list here, edit list details, and changing it up a little. Can add heaps of detail. You saw my other list about Henry Darlow Sutton. Um, you can also delete this list and you can change a list from public to private uh, to collaborative, which I'll go into in just a moment. Once you've created a list, it's very easy to keep adding content to it. So we'll go back and we'll go. Another search for um, GF Stillwell. Gladys Florence Stillwell. And if we find any other, uh, other articles about her, there's quite a, lot, uh, quite a lot of results. So I might refine it just a bit further. It's got a nice unique name though, Gladys Stillwell. We can see there's a lot of articles about um, balls and fancy dresses and music. So if we find another article about Gladys, all we need to do is click on it. Click lists, click add. And it should float to the top because it's the most recently one we've um, created and edited. All we do is click little tick box and click save just there. Okay. And if we go back into the list, by clicking a profile and going list, we can now see that there's two items in there. So it's very easy to just continue adding articles that you find about a particular person uh, to a list that you've created. But you do need to be registered to use the list feature, which is why it's, it's important to create a trove account. Uh, lists are popular with family history research is all for people with other research interests such as cooking, uh, recipes, craft, patterns. You can make a list about anything. I've made a list about a UFO my grandfather claimed to have seen in Nara in the 1950s. And because all of my lists are set to public and my profiles all set to public, anything uh, I, any list I create, so the title of the list, or anything I put in the description of the list becomes discoverable and text searchable on Trove. Okay. So not only is the top level uh, heading or title of the list uh, searchable, but also this description here, any of these names that I've put in are then searchable via Trove. So if somebody searches, I'll show you just by copying and pasting it in there. So just run a search on that and here we are in the lists. Okay, so that's come up in bold um, because it's it's all searchable. Everything is searchable. You can look for specific lists by going to the, um, the list category just over here. Perhaps you wanna see if somebody else has worked on a list about your ancestor and you can search Trove. Um, I recommend just searching for a name just as we've done um, in the general sort of newspapers category or and seeing what comes up. Okay. So a good way to see if other people are, work, are researching the same person as you. Now we're just gonna take a look at collaborative lists. Okay, we're gonna click on our profile. I'm gonna go into lists again. 
So this is a, a relatively new feature of Trove at the time of webinar recording. A new feature of uh, Trove is collaborative lists. You can work together with other Trove users on a single list, adding content to it, uh, to it deleting content. And uh, it's a feature that I really quite love. Before to work on a list, you might have all had to share a username and a login and a password. And now you don't need to do that. Okay, so we can see here, I've got my personal list that only I work on and I've got my collaborative list just here. Okay, so here's some of my collaborative list just here. Again, it's easy enough to switch from uh, public to private to collaborative list or to make a list collaborative. So we'll go to Gladys. I'll go manage this list. And then I'll go edit list details and I'll make this list a collaborative list. You can add a Facebook. So you can add your personal Facebook um, to sort of share, or you can, if, if it's sort of a family history group, you can link to that as well. And then we just click save. Okay. And if I go back to lists, okay, we can see um, I've made Gladys, uh, the Gladys list collaborative. So we can just click on that and it should appear here um, under my list of collaborative lists. To create collaborative lists, your privacy setting in your profile needs to be set to public and they appear separately to normal lists in your profile. Anyone who has signed up to Trove can request to collaborate on your list or if you want to invite people to collaborate on your list, you just need to send them the list URL. So if we click here, Gladys is collaborative now. And all you need to do is send them this. They need to be uh, registered and signed up and logged in and they can request to collaborate on your list, okay? So nobody's requested to collaborate on uh, Gladys's list because I've just made it collaborative. But if I go back to my other collaborative lists, we can see here this little orange um, notification next to Anne Sutton. So we can click on Anne and we can click manage this list. And I can see some shady looking uh, character by the name of Shan Man has requested to collaborate on my amazing list. I can now approve, decline or block their request. I might wanna find out a bit more information about who they are before I uh, decide what to do, which is why writing a little biography and making it public can be quite useful. So if I click on their uh, profile, click on their username, we can look at their biography because he's incredibly interested in Sutton family history research. So I can go back and with that information, I can approve. Uh, once you've approved, you can uh, control a person's level of access and control over the list. So I can change Shan Man to the administrator or change the collaborator. Once I've changed him to administrator, I can transfer ownership of the list to Shan Man. Okay, so I can click transfer ownership and give total control of the list to Shan Man, which sounds a bit odd, but I think it's a pretty useful feature for um, succession planning. So is there somebody who you want to inherit your research? Perhaps you've been researching somebody's family history on their behalf and you want to gift them the list. So this is a way that you can do that, but I don't want to give my list to Shan Man. Uh, once you've given them, um, ownership of the list, they then have to elect to, or they have to agree or grant you ownership back in case you, you um, make, if you ever do want it back. So think, think long and hard before giving somebody else your list, because there's really no way other than them agreeing to give it back. Like any gift really. And um, I might also like to see what list Shan Man has on the go. So what list has he created? 
So if I click on his username, I could see his profile, text corrections he's done, he's very lazy, he's only done five lines. Um, I can see tags is created, hasn't even made any tags, it's shocking. Um, no notes, but he has made one, uh, one list. So you could, you could see the list um, and something that's my list that he's collaborating on. But he's also got a list here, uh, Shan Man, called Martha Carolyn Burton, which is a name that I know from my family history research. So I can click on that and I can request to collaborate on his list. So that's, uh, that's creating lists in a nutshell, okay? So we've gone through creating list, adding the list, editing list, uh, and making lists collaborative and approving, rejecting, blocking, okay? And requesting to join other people's collaborative list. The last thing I wanna show you in Trove is text correcting. So we're gonna perform a search in Trove. And I'm going to search for uh, the wife of Henry Darlow Sutton, Mrs. H.D. Sutton. Whenever you search through Trove, you might see a little note about when the text of an article was corrected. So we could see here um, under the first article, text corrected by you and four other volunteers. Okay, so because I'm logged in, I've signed up, um, we can see articles where I've previously corrected the text and that's how it appears, okay? Um, if there's no note, like with this uh, second result here, it means the article has never been corrected. So we'll just give that a click. Remember um, I went into in the previous session, um, optical character recognition is a process where a computer reads the newspaper and translates uh, the text in the newspaper in the machine read text over here. Okay, and usually it does a pretty good job as we can see uh, with this article here. There doesn't appear to be um, many mistakes in the article. Okay, so we could see some, some mistakes with the, um, the surname. So that should be Rafsalj, but it's instead it's Rafsalj. Okay. That's an instance where the machine hasn't correctly read this surname up here. It hasn't done a good job, probably because the print's a bit, um, a little bit faded, a little bit blurry, the resolution's not great. But usually it does a pretty good job. The, um, the accuracy is, believe it or not, somewhere over 80%. This one's quite good because I think the text is very clear, but let's take a look at some really awful examples of text um, of optical character recognition. And I'm going to show you some family notices from the Herald newspaper, which was added to Trove just, just about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. So we're gonna um, just search Trove. It's actually possible to search Trove for articles which have never had corrections. And the way we do that, I'll go back to the home page and we'll search Trove and we'll go not, remember that Boolean um, phrase, colon, and we'll go, uh, we'll go not has, sorry, colon, corrections. Okay. We can see all of our results. There's no little notices about text being corrected by me or by Voluntroves or anybody. Okay, we'll limit to newspaper. We've still got quite a lot of results of, um, we've still got quite a lot of uncorrected articles. We can see we've got over 216 million. So get correcting, we'll limit to newspaper. When we're gonna uh, limit our search to the Herald, we'll go Victoria. And then we'll limit to title. Okay, so the Herald just here. So we'll limit to the Herald. And we'll scroll down just a little bit. And we'll click uh, family notices just over here. So now we're going to find family notices that have never had co uh, corrections. We can see the third result just over here. And we can see even just by looking at the thumbnail that the print of the newspaper is a bit faded. So we can click just here family notices and you can see the um the terrible quality of that newspaper 
Okay, so it's all blurry, it's quite faded, um, and there's quite good reasons for this. Uh, most of the newspapers on Trove are scanned from the microfilm, not from the hard copy. The Herald was one of the earliest Australian newspapers microfilmed, so the filming wasn't as perfect as it is today. And because the scan of the newspaper isn't fantastic, the computer has had a really hard time of trying to read this text over here and translate it into um, accurate text just over here. So none of these names here would turn up from a search of, uh, of Trobe because this is a text that we're searching. Nobody's searching for Fe Fekerson and um, people might be searching for S, that could be a turn Okay. So we can actually make this text over here match what the newspaper says over here and make those names discoverable and searchable, which is a popular pastime of many Trove users. So we're already in the article text field, but all we need to do to edit that is click fix or abuse this text. Okay. And we're just gonna put in what we can see on the screen. Don't get creative. It needs to match what we can, what we can see. So um, that's esc by, but it should be essary. Okay. And then we can click save. We can keep going and te uh, text correcting, or we can save and exit. Okay, but I'm going to stop it just that. It's just an example. So, okay, and we can see it stayed corrected. So now if somebody searches for uh, any of the names we've just corrected, focus on uh, Essary, they will appear from a search of Trove. Okay. And if we click on our profile up here, we can see previous text corrections we've made. And we can see the past correction I made, which was on the third, uh, today's date, the day of recording, um, in the Herald in that family notice just there. Okay, so all of your past corrections should be on your uh, Trove profile for text corrections. Okay. So that's text correcting in a nutshell. Try and keep it. Uh, Try, it needs to match exactly what is in the newspaper. Again, don't uh, add a, even a full stop where there was none. It needs to sort of exactly, exactly match. Many people just go through and uh, correct things like family names. I probably wouldn't bother correcting the entire article. Um, I just correct the bits that people are likely to be searching for. So it's a, it's a great sort of community service that you're doing by increasing uh, discoverability of individuals. Instructions on text correcting can be found in the help pages just up here. So just click help, click become a volunteer, and right here, correcting newspapers. So we've got why text needs correcting, find articles to edit. So we've got why text needs editing, find articles to edit, editing guidelines. Okay, it's all in here. It's a very comprehensive um, overview and instruction on how to correct text on Trove. Okay, so that's, that's, um, that's a run through of using Trove and keeping track of your research. I do have a few final tips before we go. So we'll just go back to our, our presentation. So what should you be searching newspapers for? And the answer is everything really. The obvious things to search for in Trove are the names of your family members, but there are certainly other things you can search for. Uh, ships names, descriptions of events, local events, global events, anything you can think of really. Information about a particular house or street address. We've got a webinar on uh, how to research the history, of your, uh, the history of your house and Trove certainly features in that. Sometimes with family history, you really need to think about the broader context of an ancestor's life, uh, what was happening around them in the press. 
So you could search for uh, event descriptions, rail accidents, murders, place names, businesses, bankruptcies, advertisements. My other bit of advice is remember name variants. Your ancestor's name could have been written up in a number of ways in the newspaper as we've seen across these uh, previous two sessions. Uh, initials of given names and then fully written out surname are common in older newspapers. Female ancestors might have been written up using their husband's names or initials. And also try searching for nicknames. Robert could be Bob, Patrick could be Pat. Remember my favorite way of searching Trove is to start broad and then refine using the simple search and refer back to the first session for um, advice on how to do this where we went through search tips, refining our results, and all of those ways to use Boolean um, terms and uh, keywords to limit your search further. There are a number of ways uh, you can connect with Trove. Trove has a Facebook account, has a YouTube channel uh, with some instructional videos put out by the Trove team, has a Twitter account, and there is a Trove blog. Trove regularly posts uh, Trove tips on social media, so it is worth signing up for their Facebook page. The help pages are quite interesting and they have a lot of uh, hints about using uh, Trove. So there's quite a lot of information about everything we've covered today, um, specifically about newspapers, but you might also find information about other Trove categories that could be useful for your research. If you do have a general question about using Trove for family history or even family history more broadly, it's best to use our Ask a Librarian uh, service, not the Trove contact. Um, so uh, this is where those sort of general inquiries about family history go, is Ask a Librarian, which is just on our homepage, just here. And why not take a look at our previous webinars? Uh, this webinar and all of our past webinars go onto our YouTube channel, just go to our homepage, hover over using the library, and right under here, under learning sessions, uh, you'll be able to access all of our past webinars, as well as information about upcoming sessions as well. Okay, that's me done. Um, I hope you found something useful in this talk. Uh, I really do thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a lovely day. And happy troving. <laughs>